Affectionately known as the Badlands Guardian, it is located near Medicine Hat, southeast Alberta, Canada. The feature is clearly of an uncanny likeness to that of a past Native American chief. Viewed from the air, the feature has been said by nearly all whom explore it to resemble a human head wearing a full traditional headdress with his face gazing precisely westward. Although the chosen argument for its existence is it being the result of heavy rainfall, subsequently a ground slip formation, those who use such dismissive techniques have forgotten to mention or deliberately ignore the formation's longevity and lack of morphing due to geological activity, a continual direct contradiction to these claims of geological culpability. There is a good reason we share and indeed find such curious features intriguing. We have for a long time explored many enigmatic possible ancient landmarks, many terrestrial and many much further afield. Denied, dismissed on sight due to cognitive dissonance, not only due to modern paradigm, an inability to time travel back to their date of construction and photograph said undertaking. Yet most persuasive, the unthinkable, unimaginable, mind-boggling feats that, if real, many of these now classified earthworks would have taken to achieve. There are few fields of study, in our experience, which causes such a divisive reaction and difference in opinions within antiquarian research, as there is within the field of ancient, questionably possible pareidolia. We recently shared an ancient mountain known as Pedra de Gavia, and although the claim faces erosion, regardless of geological or of artificial origins, is in the most severe final stages of natural entropy, with this eventual likeness fading into a geological feature to no longer distinguishably recognizable as a possible pre-Columbian face in the near future. We cited and shared other research, the geological evidence of the face's surface seemingly cut later, being far more recently exposed to the elements. Yet, regardless, many simply dismiss the feature due to its lack of any visually distinguishable features, which, regardless of this site's possible natural origins, is a fate bestowed upon many of the truly oldest legacies of a lost world here on our planet. It must be noted that we do not claim to know these curious, often enormous landmark or stone-cut supposed monument or earthworks' true origins. But the evidence to support it as indeed a possible achievement is enormous. The Nazca Lines, Darren Kuyu, the wonders of Egypt, the astonishing acoustic marvels of the caverns created in Malta, and so on. Not to mention the countless demonstrative feats, evidence of their capability to indeed work and eventually transport stones of mammoth proportions molded into blocks and astonishingly ancient displays of decorative artworks found all over the world. Thus, regardless of the dismissals, we find the Badlands Guardian highly compelling. Hey guys, so I'm sure you're aware of the Nazca Lines of Peru the enormous drawings found upon the land created using a vast array of subjects. What is especially interesting regarding these ancient lines found all over the world is that to truly appreciate the images, you would have to view them from space. Some of the drawings are even waving, leading many to wonder over the years regarding their original purpose. The largest lines can be found in Bolivia. Known as the Sajama Lines, they were clearly constructed by an intelligent force. Many theories regarding the original function of the lines have been put forward over the years, though to this day, the actual purpose remains a mystery. Covering an area of approximately 22,525 square kilometers, they're truly massive. Each individual line is around 3 meters wide, with the longest measuring over 20 kilometers in length. However, amazingly, the largest known drawing of one subject is actually a modern creation and it is a drawing of a man. Called the Mari Man, or Stewart's Giant, it was discovered by Trek Smith on the 26th of June, 1998. A charter pilot flying between Mari and Cooper Petty in the vast remote bushlands of southern Australia. Created deep in the outback, 
far away from civilization, the creators of this gigantic drawing remain a complete mystery. 4.2 kilometers tall and with a perimeter of over 28 kilometers, due to the massive undertaking these lines would have been, the huge resources they demanded on the land and in the air, the fact that no one saw it being created or additionally reported it, its creation will remain extremely perplexing. To create such an image, a fleet of vehicles would have been required, a system of radio communication and a team of individuals to create it. All this completed within a dry, remote, unforgiving corner of the Australian outback, without telling anyone that it's there. The Mari Man depicts an indigenous Australian man hunting with a boomerang or stick. It lies on a plateau at Finnis Springs, 60 kilometers west of the township of Mari in central South Australia. Was the Mari Man made by extraterrestrial visitors to our planet as a form of orbital indication to what inhabits the planet? Although the mystery of the Mari Man may be a new one, it's just as confusing as ancient lines. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. Although the Olmec culture has been historically established as having flourished within the now dense jungles of Guatemala, there also exists many pre-Olmec ruins and artifacts that are still baffling researchers and historians alike. The Great Head of Guatemala being one of the most controversial of all. This enormous stone face indicates that not only the Olmecs, or indeed native Hispanic race, once called Guatemala home. A gigantic, masterfully carved stone head, with a face of fine features, thin lips, and large nose, once engulfed in millennia of vegetation, directed to the sky as if in eternal prayer. The discovery unsurprisingly attracted a lot of attention, yet just as predictably, due to its unquestioned controversy, quickly slipped into the pages of forgotten history. The initial discovery first emerged when Dr. Oscar Rafael Padilla Lara, a doctor of philosophy, lawyer, and notary, received a photograph of the head in 1987, along with a vague description it stated that the photograph was taken in the 1950s by the owner of the land and that it was located, quote, somewhere in the jungles of Guatemala. The site was later established to have been 10 kilometers from a small village in the south of Guatemala. However, when Dr. Padilla managed to travel to the site, a short while after the discovery had been widely circulated throughout the country, he found that the site, along with the Caucasian featured stone face, had been obliterated. He stated, quote, It was destroyed by revolutionaries about 10 years ago. We had located the statue too late. It was used as target practice by rebels. This totally disfigured it. Sort of like the way the Sphinx in Egypt had its nose shot off by the Turks. Only worse. The eyes, nose, and mouth had been completely destroyed." End quote. Padilla was able to measure its height as having been between 4 and 6 meters. Although, predictably, the stone head had been destroyed due to its controversial nature, it may still shine light on who was flourishing in the jungles, far before any Olmec had ever stepped foot there. Additionally, and fortunately, the stone head is not the only pre-Olmec statue ever found. Named the Fat Boys, these other artifacts are another set of statues that, although not as racially controversial, possess characteristics even more so for the scientific world. These statues, retrieved and displayed, were discovered many years later to actually contain magnetic elements which along with a number of anthropomorphic artworks from the same suspected civilization, have magnetic characteristics positioned at specific locations. On the Fat Boys, it is found at the navel, although the animal statues seemingly contain them around the faces. So, the question is obvious. How did an ancient culture, located so far back within history, not only know about this magnetism, but managed to create such artworks. Why did they create them? 
Were they attempting to tell their distant ancestors something? Regardless of the controversy surrounding their creators, they are undoubtedly highly compelling.